In November of 2021, we moved to Las Vegas. And since then, I have not had any kind of firewalling solution or any kind of uh, pie hole kind of solution to protect the house and everything inside the house. Today, we're gonna fix that. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick Howell. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to break some stuff today. We're going to take my internet down and we're going to put in something that I have put off for far too long and that is an appliance-based firewalling and routing solution. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel here and got your notifications turned on because you're, this is probably going to span a bunch of different videos uh, going over the design of networking and IP layouts and VLAN, uh, all, all kinds of stuff, right? But today we're going to be focused on putting in a firewall solution. I've wanted to do this since we moved to Vegas almost 18 months ago, and I've just held off and held off because I knew I had big plans for this stuff, stuff back here. Uh, so we're, we're getting to it today. The house is empty. Uh, nobody's going to care that the internet goes down while I change some of this stuff around. So we are ready to go, and I'm going to take you guys along for the ride for me. The very first thing we need to do is go and download PFSense. Yes, PFSense is the one that I've chosen. Uh, I've looked at OpenSense. I think Linus Tech Tips even did a video recently on how they ended up using OpenSense. But all of my friends and everybody seem to just point me here. Plus, I'm even looking at potentially using uh, one of the NetGate's purpose-built appliances in the future if the old HP server solution doesn't end up working out. Now, if you guys remember, I ended up buying a bunch of servers uh, about a month or so ago, and a couple of the smaller one-use servers only had 16 gigs of RAM. Well, I told you back then, one of them I was thinking about using is PFSense. So that's what we're doing today. I've got a four port, one gig NIC in the back of that HP server. Um, it's quiet. It doesn't use a lot of power. And we're going to try and see if we can make that work as our front end PFSense router slash firewall slash all things. I've got Eros in the house. We're going to flip all of those to uh, uh, bridge mode or just wireless access points. So everything is going to come through PFSense. So I wanted it to have some horsepower. I wanted it to have some memory because, yeah, we got a lot of networking going on in the house here. All right, so the very first thing you got to do is download PFSense. All you got to do is pfsense.org slash download. Uh, make sure you set your 64-bit. Uh, uh, you can do USB or ISO. It's up to you. I recommend the USB. It'll be so much faster for you. Uh, when you get to this selection here for serial or VGA, unless you know what you're doing and you're intentionally using serial, choose VGA. Uh, and then you want to uh, choose the mirror that's closest to you. If you're in the U.S., Austin. If you're in Europe, Germany. If you're in the uh, if you're in APAC, use uh, Singapore. So I'm in the U.S. I'm going to use Austin, and we click download, and it'll download a tgz.img.z. So you'll have to unzip it, right? And then burn that .img file to a USB stick. How do we do that? A tool called Rufus. Go to rufus.ie and download this. There's no installation. You literally just run it. It's a standalone tool, and you choose your USB stick, and you choose the image you want to burn to it, and it kind of auto-decides everything else for you. It's what I use for everything, for any kind of, whether it's Windows installs, Flash updates, any of the BIOS updates for anything. Rufus is the answer, I promise you. All right, so now that we've burned our USB key, we've got to go over here and put it into the server, and then we're going to boot it up. So pop it into one of the front USB ports. And as I said before, there's a four port NIC on the back. I've got one port plugged in to the ILO port and one pl port plugged into the local switch. We're going to flip some of that around once we get it configured, but let's jump back over to the desk and get into ILO so we can get the remote console, get this thing booted up. All right, so you can probably hear the server screaming back there. I apologize that if it's taken over, but we booted up and I, I F11 to get to the boot menu and we're going to hold it right here for a second. I'm going to give you a couple of steps, all right? The first thing you need to do is make sure you've got your network ports plugged in and your thumb drive in before you hit your boot from USB here, obviously. Um, but what you want to do is take your port from your modem or the your gate, whatever comes in, How if you're bringing in uh, fiber, you want it from your ONT, whatever you would normally hook up to your router, you're going to hook it up to here. And then you want another connection that's going from the to your switch. Right now, I've got the ILO port plugged in, and I'm going to go switch those around right now, which will take my internet down effectively, and we'll finish walking through the steps here. All right, just wanted to show you guys and point this out. Here's ILO right here. You can kind of you can see it right there. And then I've got this is going to my local LAN, and this red one is my WAN. It's going to be going directly to my cable modem right here. So that's how it's cabled up. Your the ILO you can leave unplugged if you want to, but uh, we need that for right now. But WAN 
LAN. That's all you need. All right, so as you guys saw, our cables are plugged in. We're ready to go. Let's do the actual install. So we're going to come over here. We're going to boot from USB drive key number three. And you guys will be amazed how fast this goes. Uh, within five minutes, this thing will be installed and rebooting the server yet again. Uh, don't do anything here. Just let it auto boot. Uh, if you need to do some maintenance, uh, check out Lawrence Systems over on YouTube. Uh, Tom. It definitely has some amazing videos. I think he's got over, almost 100 videos just on PFSense. So if you're working with PFSense, make sure you go follow and subscribe to Lawrence Systems. That's where I'm learning all my stuff. Shout out to you, Tom. Thank you for that, for all your work on, on PFSense and many other things uh, that you do. So we're going to let this guy boot in real quick. It's going to come up to a menu. We're going to partition the hard drive. Uh, we're going to do some initial. It's going to do the install, and then we're going to go reboot the server and uh, come back through and do some initial configuration. All right, we're going to accept our terms here. We're going to install. Watch how fast this goes. Default keyboard layout. Now, this is where you get to do a tricky one. Depending on what you're installing on, you got to make sure you use the right thing. My old servers here don't quite support UEFI, so we got to use the good old BIOS and M MBR routines. We're going to do the entire disk. Yes, uh, we're going to use MBR. That's fine. Don't need anything super advanced. We're going to commit. It's going to flush the partition tables. It's going to... Do its install that takes about 15 seconds. That's it. So we're not even gonna like jump the video or anything like that. It's gonna it's gonna go through and do its thing. We're gonna do a quick install of this. Might speed this part up real quick. So you guys don't have to sit here and watch this. And there we go. Quick confirmation. Now we don't need to make any final modifications. Uh, so we'll hit no. And we'll tell it to reboot, and I'm going to run over there and yank the USB key out, and I'll see you guys back when it, she's rebooting. All right, guys, so we have booted back up into the system. A couple of things to call attention to. We've got our first question here uh, at the bottom. Do VLANs need to be set up first? If you've got an existing network configuration and you need to VLAN this in the right way, you're going to know how to do that. Um, the thing I want to call your attention to at the bottom of the screen here, uh, in the middle you can see that they were all reporting is down, uh, but at the bottom you can see that the link state was changed to up. Now you've got BGE0 and BGE3. Remember I told you I had a four port NIC card in the back of this HP server. I, I made a note down as well that BGE0 is my LAN port and BGE3 is my WAN port. That's going to be important. So should VLANs be set up now? We're going to hit no. Make sure I'm focused there. All right. So enter the WAN interface name or A for auto detection. So we know that it's going to be BGE3. That is going to be our WAN port, right? Uh, the LAN interface or A for auto detection. Uh, we're going to do BGE0. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, an optional one. Inter we can do a backup interface. We might configure that one day, but not right now on the initial setup. All right. These will be assigned as follows. WAN BGE3, LAN BGE0. Yes. Proceed. All right. Configuring those. And we'll give it a second. What it's doing right now is it's trying to pull a public IP address from my modem. So we'll see if it'll allow it to do that. And done. No, it's trying to do the WAN interface again. I guess it just reloaded it all. All right, looks like it got it finally. And we are configuring all of our other interfaces. So it's starting the DNS resolver and we're gonna boot up here in just a second and be able to get into the UI. Yay! Do, 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 do. All right, guys, so now we're cooking it booted all the way up, and we're going to go in and assign some interface IP addresses. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit number two. We're going to go in, we're going to set the, uh, the number of the interface we want to configure is the LAN IP. We want to give it a static IP of our kind of our core gateway, right? So we're going to set that as 172.16.10.1, right? This is where we're going to send all the traffic through, all right? And then we're going to do uh, slash 24, right? Uh, let's see. For a WAN, enter the new LAN IP upstream gateway address for a LAN, enter for none. Uh, don't care. Yes. 
Enter the start address. So I always do 100 to 199, 10.100 through 172.16.10.199. Must be in the interface's subnet. Enter the start address. Uh, oh, 172. Oh, okay. So I got to do them one at a time. Got it. In the end address. That look right? That looks right. Do you want to revert to HTTP as no? All right, we're reloading routing. IP address has been set to 1 slash 24. You can now access the web by opening the following URL in your browser. Enter to continue. All right, so let's jump over to the web browser. All right, guys, we made it. We are in the web GUI now. And just as a heads up, your default credentials are going to be admin and the password pfSense. Just wanted to show you guys that real quick. It's one of the first things you should go in and change. But on a new installation, I just want to make sure you guys know that that's there. So we're going to sign in and voila, we are in. Oh, my goodness. Look at it. It's uh, there's errors everywhere. Oh, OK, let's let's go to user manager and we'll change the default password. Uh, to something so that quits flashing at us all right and hit save cool all right so we'll go back to the home page that error is gone and you can see this is really cool look at what it's showing like all of the information like giving us a serial number that it's giving us a netgate device id in case we need to like open a support thing it's showing like an hp server with the bios and the release date it's showing environmental statistics memory usage swap drive usage wow this is pretty cool all right so the very first thing you want to go through is the setup wizard right so come under system setup wizard and this is going to take you through all of the configuration settings right here's how you get support if you need that that's fantastic our host name we're going to leave that as pfsense our domain we're going to mm, let's take that out for right now um actually we can do dcd what was it dcd.studio i think is what it was going to ultimately be uh primary dns we're going to set to cloudflare on the primary and the secondary we're going to set it to Google. Uh, allowed to be overridden. Uh, fine. Next. Time server. That's fine. We're going to set it to Pacific. So, you, uh, let's see. US. Where's Los Angeles? Is there a Pacific? There is a Pacific. There we go. So, next. Select a type. D Here we go. DHCP on our WAN. That's fine. We don't really want to mess with that too much. We don't have a static IP. So, not a huge deal. This is our WAN interface. Uh, we don't need any of this kind of stuff. Uh, just making sure. Yep, looks great. Next. All right, so now we're doing our LAN interface. Here's the IP address internally. Uh, we've got a 20 slash 24 subnet. We're going to be doing a bunch of VLANs and a bunch of different subnets in a more advanced video in the future for the whole network. We're going to break it up into storage and management and all kinds of stuff. So for right now, this one's fine. Just to keep things as they are. Oh, look, it prompts me to change the admin password. Imagine that. Um, let's see if it'll let me put the same thing in I just changed. Fine. Reload. Reload is now in progress. Wizard will direct to the next step once the reload is completed. And done. Congratulations. PFSense is now configured. So, finish. Oh, we got terms and, terms and conditions. Uh, thank you. Blah, blah, blah. Right? And that's pretty dope. We're all set up now. So there you go, guys. Plenty of stuff. Let's do a quick little test. We can go to YouTube.com. And yeah, I'm not signed in because I'm in an incognito one. But yeah, there you go. Internet, speed test. Let, we can throw one of those in real quick. Let it detect. Hit go. All right. She's cooking. We're going to test the upload. Make sure that's working as well. Uh, the blue light is on for Doxis 3.1, so we should see about 100 meg up. Uh, just confirming all of that, and then we'll be good to go. Yeah. All right, guys. There we go. There's plenty more to go over in PFSense. I just wanted to get you guys up and running. I'll keep you updated. Come follow me on TikTok. I might do some little one-off configuration things there, but... 
yeah, thanks for hanging with me today and enjoy the ride with PF Sense. And I'll be sure to keep you guys updated with any additional configuration changes I make. But until then, take care of the system and we'll see what it looks like upon initial configuration. Why is it booting from Nick? What the f is going on? What in the absolute f is going on?